I got to say, New Amsterdam Radio is brought to you part by Anchor FM. Have you ever thought about making your own podcast? You see, when I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? And most importantly, I don't want to deal with cables and wires and all those things. You see, the answer to every single one of these questions is pretty simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And you can use your phone, which is pretty awesome. Now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. So if you ever wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hello everyone, Flobo Boys here for New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for creatives where we take what's going on in the world around us and try to recontextualize it for people with ideas in their brains, the citizens of New Amsterdam Radio. This is where I usually ask you how everyone's doing. Um, not to say uh, it's it's pretty obvious. I'm recording this the third week of March here in the United States. I'm under, what, day nine of a self-imposed quarantine, day four of California's lockdown. Um, the global pandemic is ever reaching and I understand there's a lot of things out there, a lot of programs and news and Twitter feeds and all that stuff that's actually talking about the pandemic itself. I don't want to do that today on New Amsterdam Radio. What I do want to do is think about, uh, the grander scheme of things because a lot of people say, Hey, look, man, you're under lockdown or you're doing self quarantine. You have all the time in the world to make that next project happen. Use your time wisely. And if you're like me, you're kind of getting kind of frustrated because the ideas or the idea is not coming or you just don't have the motivation or anything like that. I want you to know in this episode, I'm not alone. So I want to focus more about that. The what's holding us back from starting that great project. We thought it was time. We have all the time in the world. And we're discussing it right now on New Amsterdam Radio. Oh, yes. Now, I made a pledge when I started this show not to make the show about me and what I'm working on. And even though I've broken that rule a couple times, I always feel bad when I do. Because frankly, look, my ideas aren't better than yours. My projects aren't superior to yours. The idea is that I want to use myself as an example to show you that I am just like you, right? There's things I've accomplished in many different fields. Uh, I wrote a couple novels before, and, you know, I'm a stand-up comic, we talked about that a couple episodes, and I DJ weddings, but there's always some projects where I always look back and I go, man, if I had the time, I would get around to it. For me, it's novel number three. Uh, originally, it was supposed to be a trilogy series in my first two novels, High Divers Up Run and Pay the Vig. Uh, I wanted to show my detractors uh, that I have improved as a writer, especially a, I, I released the first two albums, dur- um, sorry, the first two novels, not albums, during the self-publishing rush of the early 2010s. And so, of course, like most books at that time period, it wasn't the best written, um, it wasn't the most grammatically sound uh, but hey, I was college educated and I tried my best. And I, so I really want to get back to, to show people that I've grown as a writer and I wanted to, to, to work on some of the side characters that I developed and other things. But I always said, man, I don't have the time. Whether it was me working at a job where I had to get up super early to go to you and work long hours, or maybe when I went full bore into working for myself and I said, okay, I spent so much hours prospecting and looking for clients that I just have time to write this novel, this third novel in this self-proclaimed trilogy. And I say that like people were just clamoring for it, but it was more of a thing for myself. But uh, as I sit here, or stand here in my bedroom, again, day 9 or 10 on a uh, self-imposed quarantine, day 4 in California of the lockdown, which pretty much takes the voluntary thing out of this out of the equation, you are just allowed to go to the store <laughs> to get stuff, uh, or maybe gasoline for your car, and that's essentially it. I, in theory, have all the time in the world. I have all the time to sit down and actually plot out a book, and there's some times where I get motivated, and I'll open a document, and I'll, I'll write a treatment or some plot threads or a characters, but I've never been on sound mind to do it. Now, 
let's call the elephant in the room. It's, it's hard to concentrate when there is an invisible enemy out there as far as a global pandemic, right? You just can't say, all right, don't worry about that. I'm going to focus on my story, my, my fake and my made-up protagonist and antagonist. Don't mind me. I totally understand that. But besides that, if you're pretty much going to be confined to your spaces, Netflix isn't doing a better job at that as well. Why am I, and of course I'm asking you for this as well, why are we just not hunkering down and going, now's my chance? Yeah, I mean, we can create a little vlog or so. Those are easy. I'm talking about that big project, the the golden whale, the the wild goose chase, the... Holy Grail, (laughs) Golden Whale, Holy Grail. Why haven't we hunkered down? You know, why haven't we just focused on that? And I'm looking around on on Facebook for inspiration too, or social media, or whatever it is that you use to to get your news tidbits of the day. And you see creators are doing things all the time, and they're finding ways to keep their bodies trim uh, better than a gym could, and finding ways to eat better, better than uh, their eating plans can. And we're just stumbling around trying to make sense of it all. Now, before I get into what I've learned, I just want to say that, yo, you're not alone. I think that's something that I'm dealing with myself. Yeah, I do a couple push-ups and sit-ups here, but I have a gym membership for a reason, (laughs) you know? And yeah, I guess I can cook for myself, but it always feels good to stop by the prepared meal section over at the grocery store uh, when you can just pop in and pop out to get uh, grub for that day instead of having to think in advance three or four days what I want to do. All that stuff, I just want to say up front that I get it, and it's not just you. I think a lot of us, you know, if we are creative people, we tend to feel um, things. We are empathetic, em- empaths in that way, sorry. Uh, we're empaths in that way, and sometimes if the world is not feeling right, if you're not feeling right, uh, the inspiration can dry up. Professionals would tell you, don't wait for inspiration to create. But this is something different. This is like the very fabric of our daily lives that can possibly, potentially be altered forever, if not uh, altered considerably in the short or medium or long term. So again, just be a little bit more patient with yourself. It's a huge adjustment. You should not have to berate yourself for the lack of content or the lack of ideation or lack of development on your projects. Just knowing that two, three weeks ago, we were in a whole different lifestyle altogether. Give yourself that time to adjust, to make more sense of the world. And I can say maybe this whole idea may uh, influence the next project for you, but I can't. I don't know what that project is. I'm not sure if if you were a, a jewelry maker, how that would change. <laughs> but I guess from my side, the comedy side, the writing side, the music side, uh, that's definitely something I'm taking solace in and saying, hey, look, this may change my perspective for the better. And let's just take some time to, to internalize what's going on and roll that in with our previous experiences. You don't need me to tell you that most of our roadblocks are mental, right? We have to find ways to just will it and make it happen. A lot of times I create a project, it's kind of like a marathon or a half marathon, and I'm not here to wax poetic about training. Uh, but I will say this. There was a time where I ran half marathons. Not the full ones, because I'm not crazy. <laughs> but I did half marathons. And I thought the cool thing about half marathons is that it was a perfect balance, at least for me and my fitness level, of athleticism, you know, training and eating right and getting to shape, and pure will. Like, because you can be in the best shape on the planet unless you find time, three hours or four hours a day, to run half marathons until they are second nature the day of a race. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. That's kind of what the mental fortitude is. And from my experience, the mile 10, the mile 11, you're kind of like, oh man, I'm close, but I'm tired. I can just stop doing this right now and I'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the thing is, too, uh, with our creative ideas, our next song, or in my case, this week, I launched a Patreon, and I'm not here to advertise it quite yet, but it is available at patreon.com slash boys. I always said, you know what, I'm going to get it done, I'm going to get it done, I'm going to sit down and get it done, and it almost never happened. I, I, it took me, and this is my first tip for you guys, a process over a couple of days. Uh, because the world around us is changing... And you may not have the motivation to work on it in the ideal way you're thinking, you know, sitting down and and the next inspiration washes over you and you just go into a trance and create. Owe it to yourself to put, I don't want to say an hour because an hour sounds massive in the world of distractions and Netflix and Twitter updates and stuff like that. Just give yourself 10 minutes, five even, 
to do something on that project. In that way, if you were to employ yourself at your own creative company, if you were the CEO of all your creative projects and endeavors, if you had an imaginary boss that said, hey, what are you working on? In my case, Flowable Corp. Hey, what's Flowable Corp working on today? Or hey, Mary Sue, what's Mary Corp working on today? You can say, hey, look, there was some slow and steady progress. 3% growth, I wrote one page. Or I came up with a Pinterest of the color tones I want to use. Or I found this great acrylic website that can give me paint at a discount. I'm going to work on some more tomorrow. I think that's where you get the momentum. Because if you take time to do it, even in passing, even with dealing with the news updates, even dealing with uh, how do you go outside, how do you go grocery shopping, I think you will find that you give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back. Hey, look, I did it. It wasn't something I put off. I'm a big to-do list person. I have a to-do list, and I can tell you from the comedy side, I I have write comedy on my to-do list for the longest time, and yeah, I wrote a joke this week because, well, out of time, but that phrase, write comedy, has been unchecked for weeks, for a long time, because one, the goal isn't attainable. I can write comedy in a line, or I can I can wait until I sit down and hunker down and, and write a five-page joke, but those five-page jokes aren't coming. And I can tell you the best bits I ever came up with is when I said, hey, look, small idea, write it down, and watch that small idea grow. So if you are, back to our jewelry maker example, if you said, no, I have to sit down and make my entire spring 2020 collection this weekend, you might pre-burn yourself out. The idea might be too large for us to be like, oh man, forget it. I'm not even in the mood. But if you say, hey, look, you know what? I'm I'm feeling this anime that I'm forced to watch on Netflix because there's nothing else I want to see. Hey, this character has a cool look. Let me try to do a earring piece to this cool character. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm inspired to do a whole line based on pop culture characters. It's never that easy, but you get what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be a dedicated time. I, it's kind of unconventional um, or counterintuitive. You know, you should be saying to yourself, I have to put two hours aside to work on it, but I don't think that's really effective. And the second thing also, besides all that, is really tap into your social network. I mean, they are a captive audience. They are looking for the positive news and updates they can right now. So between everything that's going on, if you just say, hey, look, I'm working on something, what do you guys think? Uh, If you have time, let me know what you think. Uh, You'd be surprised the person that you would even believe would even see your content your posts will chime in from high school or college and go hey that's pretty cool or here's what i was thinking uh giving you even more juice to come up with more stuff later on that's all the time we have for this edition of am sam radio listen you guys have been inundated probably with so many different content recommendations this week, the week before, just as a means of escape or to, 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 to get your mind off what's going on. I appreciate that, that you took time to listen to this episode of New Amsterdam Radio and all the other episodes. This podcast was kind of a dark and dirty secret. I was kind of embarrassed when I started it. I didn't think anyone would listen. Uh, but, you know, the fact that we have a little bit of a community now that are just checking out the show and taking the ideas and applying it to the projects. That means a lot to me. And, and don't stop creating, even though the world does seem a bit, as the word is being overused these days, crazy. Make sure you follow me on social media, at Flobo Boys on Twitter, at Flobito on Instagram, and Flobito.com. Mentioned a little earlier, Patreon is now launched, patreon.com slash Flobo Boys. Exclusive content coming there. Uh, the web store, buy a t-shirt. I'm a creative. My whole life is going to be changed one way or another with this whole issue. We'll probably talk about that in a future episode. Uh, but please support the homie right now at flobito.threadless.com. And until next time, as always, the city is yours. <laughs>